Hey there, I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, excuse the lighting, sorry, I'm just sitting at an angle where the, the sunlight just seems to be hitting my chin. Um, so in, in the last podcast, I, I talked about test cricket, the sessions, and tried to draw a parallel between that and our and what we could possibly learn uh, from that and carry forward to software development. And I just touched upon an issue I'm currently working on, which was which related to lambdas and layers. Uh, so in this podcast, let's just get into the weeds and talk about that particular issue. I don't necessarily have a solution, not all the way through, but I want to share what I've found so far and hopefully it'll help you. Um, so, you know, as part of what we're doing, as part of one of the things that we're doing right now at Snowpal, uh, one of the new projects that we started recently, we, are, we, are, uh, we have a dependency on AWS, on a few services on AWS. Uh, but in this video, in this podcast, I'll just speak to one of them, right? Lambda in particular. So we, uh, you know, uh, created a, a Lambda function uh, just as an example and tried to deploy it on, on AWS. Uh, it was all right. And then when we started adding dependencies, right, it was a node Lambda function. We started adding dependencies and I was trying to run it. I ran into a, a, a number of issues. One of them, and the first one in, uh, in particular, I want to talk about that here, was that it didn't find the dependencies, right? Say one of the uh, NPM modules that we have as part of the function is uh, is Morgan, right, for logging, it wouldn't find it. Uh, it's, it is part of the package JSON. I do the yarn, I do a yarn install. We do a yarn install and, and push it up, and we do a SAM deploy. But then when you when you run it, it would complain that hey, it didn't find uh, the the find Morgan the, the npm module. And we were trying to debug and trying to figure out what what is going on there, right? Because it's all good. I'm able to be able to run it locally. We run the other issues locally. I'll come back to it either now or later or in a different video in a different podcast. But, but just to go back to what I was saying earlier, we, it complained of that dependency issue. So again, you know, you can look for help online and there's, the, there's generally a lot of help you can find, but I've said this in previous podcasts, you have to know what you're looking for. And you also have to kind of uh, make a judgment on if the solution that somebody is proposing is applicable to you, whether even if it solves your problem, if it, if it doesn't, it's easier, but if it, uh, if it does, uh, more often than not, developers try to consume that and drink the Kool-Aid and use that solution, which is only going to come back and bite you. If you don't exactly know what that solution did or why you think it is the right solution to solving your problem, just because you get past the bug doesn't make it the right solution, right? So uh, I didn't find much help. There's a lot of documentation. I mean, Amazon has tons of documentation, but if you read every single one of them, it'll take you like 10 years to get anything out the door. Also, it's it's also a happy path scenarios, right? If then things go wrong, uh, there's version issues and all kinds of issues. You you can't expect to find it. it's just software. It's just complex. It's a complex beast in that sense. So no, not trying to blame anybody, right? If if you were I were a technical writer and doing this at Amazon, it's it's still going to be enormously difficult, just given the number of services they have and the number of things every service does. And that that's true for for any large company, for that matter, for any company, whether large or small. So back to the issue, it kept complaining that Morgan was not found, right? I mean, it didn't find the dependency. And of course, the dependency is part of the package JSON. I mean, in JSON, it's in the YAN log file. So you think everything should be there, but it didn't find it, doesn't matter. And then we started, I was trying to debug that and I was like, okay, I tried a few different things. And you know, when you try, you, you wanna try as much as you can, right? So try them in small portion sizes and keep trying them. It, you don't have to look up, uh, nobody needs to bless that option because you're just gonna keep trying, keep pushing changes one after the other, keep them really, really small. Don't make like five changes in one go. Then you wouldn't know, uh, even if one fixed it, the other one could have broken it further, so you wouldn't know. So make sure your changes are really granular and small, right, in that sense. So I tried a variety of changes and then finally I was like, you know what, let me not have any dependencies at all in package. You know, I wanna build it, write the code locally, when I push it out on Lambda, let me just get rid of everything that's in uh, in the dev section, in the dependencies section, sorry, in package.json. So yank this whole thing out to see if uh, what difference it made, right? Uh, I think if memory serves me right, uh, there was not there's no difference, meaning it was the exact same error. There's not any other error. I was expecting to see if it would complain about any other dependency that it could have could have possibly depended on before I pushed it uh, to Lambda. Uh, I might be forgetting some specifics there, but but long story short, it didn't tell me, uh, it, it, it was the same error, if, I, if I'm not wrong, it was the same error. 
So I was I was more and more convinced that it, it was not picking up the dependencies from a package or JSON or the other option was that, that there, there are some NPM modules that probably Amazon the Lambda Lambda supports natively, but maybe it doesn't support all of them, right? It's almost like using Heroku and adding your build packs. If you don't add the correct build pack, and then it's just not going to work. So just the same concept, but it's different terminologies. So I yanked, I removed the entire section from package, just uh, uh, from package or JSON just before I did the SAM deploy. And then I said, okay, let me try to add these dependencies separately, right? Through uh, layers, right? So if you're familiar with Lambda, uh, or even if you're not, you know, they support a notion of layers. You can have Lambda functions and you can add layers, any number of layers. Uh, you kind of, I can show that probably, you know, uh, I have it running on my machine. So you create these layers, you zip those files, it needs to be in a certain format or directory structure, and then you upload that layer uh, to Amazon, uh, to AWS, and then you associate those layers, one or n number of layers with your Lambda functions, right? So in other words, you can add your dependencies, you can add, you can do a variety of things with layers, but in this case, what I did was, I had a pretty dumb layer, which had did nothing, but simply had a package of JSON and a YAN lock, meaning all the dependencies were part of that layer, and the actual Lambda function did not have any dependencies in package.json and therefore in the YAN lock file or if you use npm package lock, right? So I, I was like, okay, let me try that. And it's, I did not find anyone suggesting or recommending this approach. I didn't find any such documentation, nothing on Stack Overflow, just, just to help you understand uh, where I was coming from. I figured, you know what? doesn't take much time. Let me add a layer. Let me try to see if that works because then I'm literally giving AWS the dependencies that I need with the specific version numbers of Morgan and whatnot, right? And then uh, pleasantly and kind of to my surprise or maybe not to my surprise, I, was, uh, I had a good feel about that approach. It actually worked. So it was able to, you know, I, I provided the dependency separately and then the code uh, has, uh, the Lambda function relies on it, but it doesn't have the dependency packaged as part of the function itself. That's all the problem. So that actually took a little bit of time. So I figured I'll just share this with you. Uh, so if you're building Lambda functions, maybe this will help you, right? This way you separate them. You don't, you're not at the mercy of these dependencies or modules being available in the context of, of AWS and Lambdas you specify what you want in a layer and then you can add any number of layers, right? So this layer is just a dependency layer. I called it like a, a pitch dependency layer or I just gave it a project name and then a dependency layer and associated that dependency to the Lambda function. And then uh, that I got past that issue. That's not to say that life was like, uh, uh, what is it, joyful and, or blissful and those things were hunky-dory from that point onwards. I've run into a number of other issues with Lambda uh, some of them have open PRs, some of them have PRs that are closed, but they, the issue still remains. Maybe it, it was resolved momentarily and then it, it, is, it came back again. So uh, obviously, right, it's, you're never in a situation where things are like bug free and you can expect or wait for these PRs to be resolved and then consume them. So you have to find solutions, right? Uh, you have to find alternative solutions, alternative architecture, alternative design. Uh, alternative approaches and methodologies because that's the only way you're going to be productive. So hopefully this was an inter uh, this made some uh, is valuable to you if you're a Lambda developer uh, and, and if you're using layers. And in the next ones, I'll probably talk a bit more about SAM deploys and uh, build testing it locally and what are the some of the challenges we are kind of running into. Um, and that's uh, Hopefully my video is still recording, but that's all I have to say in this podcast and hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit uh, from it. And before I end, uh, check out our platform on uh, snowpal.com. Uh, just go to Chrome, Safari, Firefox, doesn't matter. If you're on, uh, on an iPad, check us out as well. We have it built in a pretty nice responsive way. So you should be able to go to snowpal.com on your tablets and just use it just fine. Uh, on touchscreen devices or in addition just download our app from the app and play stores as well and just get organized whether you're at work at school in college at home you're a traveler you're uh, you're a youtuber it doesn't matter what you do for a living i think the platform has a feature of everybody but the crux of it and the essence of it is it will give you the structure that you could possibly use um, that's about it thanks and talk to you soon